Hi, everybody. Welcome to China Source Conversations. My name is Joanne Pittman. I work for China Source. And we're thrilled today to have a couple of guests who are also good friends of mine. Uh, we have with us today I Ching Thomas from Singapore. I Ching is the author of Jesus, the Path to Human Flourishing, and she teaches on um, contextualization in Chinese culture. From Hong Kong, we have Hannah Lau, and Hannah is the author of the book, Wherever You Go. She's also a consultant and was a former teammate uh, with us here at China Source. So Hannah, it's good to see you as well. And I've invited them on today to talk about their new project called Canto Sense, which is a video podcast. Is that right? I got to get all the lingo down. That's right. So it's a video uh, podcast that they produce each week. So I'm going to just throw some questions out. What is Canto Sense? Thank you, Joanne, for having us. Uh, such a privilege to talk to you again. Um, you asked about Canto Sense. Well, essentially, Canto Sense is a platform, uh, a virtual platform, that is for uh, insight, discussion, and really to build community on contextualization and cultural redemption as well for the cultural Chinese. I think one of the uh, issues that we have with regards to Chinese culture is a lot of believers, once they become a believer, you know, they um, tend to reject some of the practices or traditions because they, believe that it, it opposes what uh, the biblical worldview, but that's not necessarily the case. And that's why our hashtag is not reject, but redeem the Chinese culture, because I think our call to be a follower of Jesus is to, uh, to advance the work of redemption. Obviously, there will be some things that we need to reject, but uh, overall, let's try and see if we can redeem before we reject. And Ultimately, how can we live fully Christian and fully Chinese at the same time? Yeah. Yeah, I really like that hashtag. That really encapsulates what, what you guys are trying to do. Can you explain the name to me, Canto Sense? I mean, a lot of times when we talk about China, there are prefixes that are more common, such as you know, Sino or, or, you know, something like that. But you guys have chosen Canto, which I assume relates to Cantonese. So why, why Canto sense? Well, I don't think uh, Canto is meant to be as uh, seriously taken as Sino. <laughs> um, but it mainly started as sort of a hook and, um, and just something quirky. Um, but it really came from conversations between I Ching and I uh, where we are both of Cantonese background, uh, though she's uh, from Malaysia and I'm from Canada, but uh, our, our roots are Cantonese. And just through our conversations, we would talk about some of the things that we do within Chinese culture. And we say, well, that just makes sense. It's just good sense. It's, it's Canto sense, you know? And it just sort of came about as this quirky little thing. And we realized that even with geographies and generation and all that kind of stuff, there are so many nuances and signatures of Chinese culture that have persisted and prevailed um, and, and traveled well. And so we decided to use this Canto Sense idea um, as sort of like common sense for Chinese people is <laughs> Canto Sense, but we are in no way exclusively uh, Cantonese. We just happen to pick up on it because we are. But if you watch our episodes, you'll notice that we are inclusive of all cultural Chinese, uh, you know, groups and dialects, uh, you know, Taiwanese, Hakka, Teochew, Hokkien, you know, what have you. I mean, we, we're talking about all of Chinese culture, though understanding that there are certain nuances to certain, uh, to certain groups. Okay, so you're, you're, uh, you're, it seems like your primary audience are um, Chinese, overseas Chinese, maybe in some of those places that you mentioned who are, you know, maybe they, they, they're culturally Chinese, but they grew up in another country. And so they have sort of that blended culture. Um, what about us? What about us Lao Wai or us foreigners, us non-Chinese? Can you help us? Yeah. Well, absolutely. The answer is a thousand percent yes. Um, when we started this, we decided that we want to really speak to two groups. And the first group is Chinese Christians. So whether you are mainland Chinese, Hong Kong Chinese, wherever you're, if you are a cultural Chinese Christian, we want to help talk through and navigate through the nuances of the culture so you 
uh, will know how to deal with your Chineseness, so to speak, within your Christian faith. So that's the first group. And then the second group is for people who are non-Chinese, uh, but also believers, and maybe you're serving international uh, students, maybe you're uh, in ministry uh, in a Chinese culture country, um, and you just want to understand, you know, how can I reach out to these people in a relevant way? Um, you know, how can I share? How can I disciple? How can I equip people in a way that speaks to their heart language? And so absolutely, this is not just for people who are Chinese, but even for the non-Chinese, here's how you can better understand the culture in the context of the Christian faith. Yeah, we received an email not too long after we started from a vicar from the UK, and he is actually half Chinese. And he said, you know, this is really encouraging for me because uh, I've never really looked at my ch the Chinese side of my identity just because I'm a believer. I just had this impression that, you know, you probably reject most of these things, these traditions and rights. And he said that, you know, just look at Kanto Sense and thinking through some of the things that we talked about on Kanto Sense, just you know, was very encouraging for him, helping him to even understand his own cultural identity. So th that's definitely very encouraging for us. And one of the things that we found is a lot of the theological or discipleship resources that we get uh, for in this part of the world, in the majority world, um, unfortunately is written from a Western perspective. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong uh, for, for these resources to be written from a Western perspective. But I think what ends up happening is that there are still a lot of hard issues that are very relevant with regards to um, spiritual formation and you know, spiritual transformation. A lot of these issues are not dealt um, with in these resources. I mean, a great example is filial piety. Now, of course, we all know, yeah, we respect our parents, but I think filial piety, especially in the Chinese context, is just so significant and so deep, and it just is so prevalent in so many aspects of our life, from life to death to after death, you know, but these are issues that are not dealt with in a lot of the, the discipleship or spiritual formation resources. So we, we really want to capture that and that be in the gap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I watched one of your episodes. I think it was on funeral rites. Yeah. And how Chinese Christian navigate all of the funeral customs um, that are that are rooted in traditional Chinese folk religions, I, I, I think. And it was so interesting because uh, you brought on, you had a guest who was a Christian funeral home director. Am, am I remembering this right? That's right. That's right. That was episode three, I think it was, on funeral rites. And we invited a guest um, who is a funeral director here in Hong Kong, runs his own uh, funeral company, and they specialize in uh, Christian, uh, Catholic, and neutral funerals. And so they don't do the Buddhist and the Taoist thing. But of course, in Hong Kong, even though you don't do those types of funerals, you're met with clients who will ask for all sorts of things mm -hmm. that, that aren't a part of that, that are from you know, the Buddhist Taoist uh, traditions. And so he's so seasoned in being able to work through those nuances and, and provide sound guidance and encourage believers how to work around the complicated uh, family dynamics when, when those things come up. And so he speaks uh, with great insight on that episode. Yeah, that was a that was a really fascinating um, episode that you did. What are some of the other topics that you have tackled so far? Oh, we've got uh, a lot of exciting things coming up. Um, we just had an episode come out on um, career choices, or you know, Chinese Why parent, our parents, Chinese parent <laughs> yeah. uh, preferred professions, as we call them. Uh, this uh, coming Friday, we're going to be talking about frugality. And um, we have lots of great stuff coming up on honor, shame, mental health, uh, polite fights, if you guys know what those are. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> things like, you know, Chinese perception on fate and destiny, you know, how do you navigate that? Um, and then we also look at some um, special occasions and festivals like Hungry Ghost, Dragon Boat, you know, all these things. And um, 
Yeah, some, some of it is much like the, the funeral rite stuff where we try to find ways of redemption, but other mm-hmm. times it's just to provide more insight and understanding and, and discussion around it. So if somebody just has a question, I mean, when I was in China, I used to get this a lot. It would be like, you know, my friends did this and I just can't figure out what was going on or I saw something, it just left me befuddled. I mean, for, you know, as foreigners were in, Ch- in China, we were we were always in a state of permanent befuddlement as were our Chinese friends as they watched us. Um, you know, th- 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 simple things like, you know, do you shower in the morning or do you shower at night? But um, um, one, of the, one of the things I, I remember that we would often encounter is, um, uh, you know, dressing. You know, how do you dress? When do you, you know, like in, in, in China, when I first went there, I lived in, you know, in uh, central China. And then on, you know, October 1st, you put on your long underwear, you know, and you dress by the, it was all of these sort of rituals and rules around dressing that just seemed, seemed a little bit um, befuddling to us. But, but I do remember one was like, I had some friends here in, here in America who had a, um, some Chinese staying with them. They were visiting delegation of educators from a province and they were hosting them in their in their home for a couple of weeks. And they called me and they said, Joanne, we're really confused. They said, these, these guys, you know, they're PhD, they're doctors, they're all these. As soon as they walk in the door at four o'clock, they put on their pajamas. What's up with that? Now, is that the kind, I mean, you know, yes, you get into the big honor and shame, the contextualization. Is that the kind of thing you're also gonna be touching on? Absolutely. Yeah, that's house clothes. <laughs> oh, house clothes. Is there a Chinese name for that? Yes, we call it okaysam in Cantonese, which literally translates to clothes at home, you know, uh, okay. home clothes, house clothes, you know. Okay. And uh, interestingly, you mentioned that because the, the episode coming out on Friday um, under frugality, we are going to uncover the mystery of house clothes that we also okay. mentioned in episode one. So do stay tuned for that. Okay, well that'll be great because I know a lot of I know a lot of colleagues that I've had over the years will, will be very interested and will say, oh, I wish I'd known that before I went to China 20 years ago or something like that. So where can people find you? Are you are, do you have a website? We okay. don't have a website, but we do have a YouTube channel. We're okay. also on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all okay. under at our handle is Canto Sense uh, okay. or at Canto Sense. And um, please reach out to us, share with us your Canto Sense. If you have questions like the ones that Joanne just mentioned, um, we'd be happy to hear from you or topic ideas. If you're thinking, oh, I've always wondered about that, you know, um, do let us know. I mean, one of the best responses that we've heard is just how practical the topics we're covering are to helping understand the Chinese culture. And it really goes into the day-to-day living, you know, how do you interact with your parents? How do you choose a career? How do you, you know, and like I Ching mentioned, you know, discipleship resources often don't get to that granular level, even right. if they are in the right cultural context. And so what we're hoping to do is make things just really livable. I mean, they are resources, but in Chinese language, you know, mm-hmm. but in English language for cultural Chinese discipleship, that's just not, not sufficient that's out there. Well, that's wonderful. It seems it, so it, it seems like you guys are really kind of filling that blank space in the middle between the you know the the heady stuff, the theological stuff, and for Chinese, and yet you've got a lot of Chinese who don't probably under who don't speak or read Chinese. Well, listen, this has been a great conversation. I want to congratulate you two on this new venture. I think it's great. I've enjoyed the I've enjoyed the uh, the ones that I've watched. And as we say in China, Jio Jio. Thank you. I hope, this, I hope this works out great. We'll Thank be watching. you so much. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Joanne. Talk soon.